Hi guys, my name is Katie Blair. I've been teaching Biology 101 and 102 for the last six years now. And what I'd like to do for this presentation is give you the quick and dirty version of cellular respiration. This is one of the hardest concepts in 101. I find that a lot of students get really bogged down in all the steps and all the chemicals. So we're going to go over the basic steps, what happens in each, and then what you should expect to see from the two types of cellular respiration. So let's talk about the whole point of cellular respiration. The whole point is to take the things that we eat and break them down to make energy so that our cell can do work. And anytime we talk about cell energy, we're gonna talk about ATP, which is adenosine triphosphate. Okay, so everything that you eat, your cell uses to, for, to have energy to perform work. In our cell parts lecture, we talked about the mitochondria, which was the power plant of the cell, so this should be at least somewhat familiar to you. These are these little kidney bean looking guys in the cell. And they're the site of aerobic cellular respiration, or the place where the energy is going to be made in the cell. All right, two types of respiration, and really they depend on whether there is enough oxygen available to the cell or not. Okay, so over here on the left, we're gonna talk about aerobic respiration. If you're doing aerobic exercise, you're running, you're jumping, you're using a lot of oxygen, remember aerobic respiration also requires oxygen. So that's kind of the highlight. Aerobic requires oxygen. Aerobic steps are always gonna happen in the mitochondria. It's gonna make lots of ATP for the cells. So you'll see that me refer to this as plan A. It's the ideal plan. A couple steps that are aerobic are gonna be conversion, citric acid or the Krebs cycle, and the electron transport chain, which we'll all talk about in a second. The next over here on the right is anaerobic, and anaerobic is kind of plan B. This is when you don't have enough oxygen available. You can still make a little bit of ATP, but not a whole lot. Um, this is going to occur in the cytoplasm, and our two steps are going to be glycolysis and fermentation. Along the way, we're gonna pick up two chemicals, NADH and FADH2. Think about these as little shopping carts that we collect along the way. And during the steps, we're going to fill them with energy that when we get to the electron transport chain, we're going to convert that energy into directly ATP, which is our cell energy. Okay. All right, the four steps of respiration, glycolysis, conversion, citric acid, sometimes called the Krebs cycle, and then the electron transport chain. Cellular respiration is something that you need to look over a couple of times. You're not going to understand it the first time. Um, you may not even understand it the second time, but hopefully after a couple times of hearing it, it will start to at least make sense to you. All right, aerobic cellular respiration, remember that that's the one we have to have oxygen for. That's going to be our plan A, our ideal way of making energy. All right, so our first step is glycolysis, and literally this means the breakdown of glucose. Well, what's glucose? That's sugar. It's in the food that you eat. Okay. So that glucose is going to be broken down into two pyruvate molecules. You're going to make two ATP, which is our cell energy, and then two NADH. Remember, that's one of our shopping carts. Because it's anaerobic, it happens in the cytoplasm of the cell. After glycolysis, we're faced with kind of a crossroads, an important decision. So that pyruvate that we just made has a decision to make here. If we have enough oxygen available to us, remember we want to go to our plan A, which would be going on to conversion. If we don't, the only other option we have available to us is fermentation, which we'll talk about at the end, so just keep that in your head. All right, so our next step, which is conversion, that pyruvate that we just made is gonna turn into 2-acetyl-CoA, and during this step, you're gonna generate two more of those little shopping carts, the NADHs, and carbon dioxide, which remember is our gaseous waste product. It's an aerobic step, so remember it requires oxygen, and if it's aerobic, it has to be in the mitochondria. Next step is the citric acid or the Krebs cycle. And during this step, the acetyl-CoA that we just made are gonna be broken down. If you do happen to take biochem after Bio 101, you'll have to learn all the fun steps that occur in here. But for our purposes, just know that acetyl-CoA is broken down. Once that's broken down, you're gonna generate a whole lot of stuff here. Two FADH2s, remember those are our shopping carts. Six NADHs, more shopping carts. Two ATPs, so we're making some energy directly. And then carbon dioxide, that gaseous waste product that we exhale. 
It happens in the mitochondria, so it has to be aerobic. All right, now for our payoff stage. This is the last stage called the electron transport chain. Remember we said all the energy that we were storing in those shopping carts, we're going to kind of dump out on the cash out counter and we're going to turn it into ATP. So let's talk about where we collected those along the way. Okay, down here at the bottom. So we made two NADHs in glycolysis, two in conversion, and then six in the Krebs cycle. If you put those all together, that gives us 10 total NADHs that we made. The conversion rate for NADHs to ATP is that for every one NADH, we're going to make three ATP. Okay, so we have a total of 10. 10 times 3 gives us 30 ATP that we just made. One more shopping cart was the FADH2. The only time we picked that up was 2 in the Krebs cycle. The exchange rate for that is for every 2 FADH2s, we're going to make 4 ATP. And all we have is 2, so that would give us 4 ATP. All right, let's put that together. 30 plus 4 gives us 34 total ATP that we made in the electron transport chain. Compared to those little me measly two here and there that we've been picking up, 34 is an awful lot of energy for our cells. Okay. So let's put that together for aerobic cellular respiration. Remember we made two ATP directly in glycolysis, two directly in the Krebs cycle, and then we just made 34 in the electron transport chain. So if we put those all together, that gives us 38 total ATP. This is a magical number to remember because I promise you your instructor will ask you how many total ATP production in aerobic cellular respiration. All right, let's go back to that. Remember I told you to keep that fermentation in your head? This is the plan B part. Okay. That pyruvate that we made from glycolysis, remember it had a decision to make here? Well, before it had enough oxygen available, so it could go on to conversion. But let's say there's not enough oxygen available. The only option we have at this point is going on to fermentation. And remember, it's our backup plan. So we're not making nearly enough nearly as much energy as we did in aerobic, but we're still making some. Okay, so in fermentation, remember, we do not need oxygen for fermentation to occur. There's two types. The first is alcohol fermentation, okay, and that's going to occur in yeast, and it will give us alcohol and carbon dioxide. The next is lactic acid, and this occurs in our muscle cells. Okay, the result is going to be lactic acid or muscle fatigue. And if you look there, we're only making two ATPs per glucose molecule. So that's not really a whole lot compared to that 38 that we just made. But again, it's a backup method. All right, let's review. All right, so we have a bunch of our steps here. Glycolysis. Remember, in glycolysis, glucose is broken down into... Good, pyruvate. All right, let's say we do not have oxygen available to us. What's the next step out of fermentation, conversion, Krebs cycle, and the electron transport chain are we going to go to? Hopefully you said fermentation. And what are our two types of fermentation? Good, alcohol and lactic acid. Okay. All right, let's go back. Let's say we do have oxygen available to that little pyruvate. Where is he going to go next? Good, conversion. And in conversion, remember, we're converting that pyruvate into acetyl-CoA, all right? That acetyl-CoA is going to go next to the Krebs cycle. In the Krebs cycle, we're going to make a lot of FADH2s, NADHs, which are then going to take their energy to the last step, which would be the electron transport chain. And then they're going to exchange that energy for ATP, or cellular energy. Okay. okay, this is a summary chart of everything that we just talked about. This would be a really good thing to memorize. It might help you um, learn to put things where they belong in the course of the um, aerobic respiration. All right, so we have our ATPs, our NADHs, and our FADH2s. And then we have our four steps here. So in glycolysis, we made two ATP, two NADHs. Conversion, we made two NADHs. Krebs cycle, remember we made a whole lot of stuff in that step. Two ATPs, six NADHs, and two FADH2s. And then finally in the electron transport chain, we made 34. That was our big payoff stage of ATP. So 34 plus 2 plus 2 would give us th a total of 38 ATP for aerobic cellular respiration. 
Again, I would encourage you to read this in your chapter, maybe watch this a few times. Don't get frustrated if you don't understand it at first, but I hope this helped.